Sup, shooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, in the past month, I have been discussing a lot of theoretical hair loss treatment modalities, some of which are interesting and rooted in quality scientific research, such as vertiporfin, as well as some of which are just complete broccoli, like scalp massages and reishi mushrooms. So, in this video, I would like to return to my roots and go over the scientific data on conventional hair loss treatments. Specifically today, I'd like to address the question of what is the optimal dose of finasteride for hair loss. So, we hear a lot about what is or isn't the optimal dose of finasteride. You know, there will be camps of people who say we should use the one milligram dose per day because that is the dose that was used in the initial clinical trials for finasteride. And then you'll have other people who say that half a milligram daily or even every other day works just as well and it is therefore redundant to use the standard one milligram dose. So this has all led to a lot of confusion as nobody can seem to decide who is right here. So the first thing we should do to make sense of things is ask ourselves this, why do most of us who take finasteride for hair Hair loss, take it at one milligram daily. The obvious answer would be because that is the dose that was used in the clinical trials for finasteride, which led to its approval for hair loss as Propecia. But why did they choose that dose specifically? Why didn't they, for instance, just approve Proscar, which is the five milligram version prescribed for prostatic hypertrophy to hair loss patients as well? Well, let's go over that. In general, when it comes to any pharmaceutical treatment, whether it be finasteride or even aspirin, you want to use the lowest dose possible that is still high enough to be effective, but low enough to minimize the risk of side effects. So in order to determine the optimal dose of finasteride, there was a study conducted in 1999 that looked at scalp biopsies in men with androgenic alopecia who were given a wide range of doses of oral finasteride. And this study showed that finasteride doses from as high as 5 milligrams a day down to 0.5 0.01 milligrams a day had effects on lowering both serum DHT and scalp DHT, but it seemed that doses of at least 0.2 milligrams a day had significant effects on both serum and scalp DHT, as you can see here. This is a graph from that study showing the effect of the different doses on scalp DHT, and this is a graph looking at serum DHT. It is interesting that 0.2 milligrams per day lowered both scalp and serum DHT, but a dose as low as 0.05 milligrams per day lowered scalp DHT with less than an effect on serum DHT. Also, it looked like there was not much difference in the effect on scalp and serum DHT when using 5 milligrams per day, which is the standard dose for treating prostatic enlargement, versus 1 milligrams per day, which of course is the standard dose for treating hair loss. At the time this research was done, it was felt that maybe it was important to lower both scalp and serum DHT, so that's why it was felt that 0.2 milligrams and not 0.05 milligrams might be the minimum effective dose. But the scalp DHT is obviously more important than serum DHT in fighting hair loss, so this study raises the possibility that doses as low as 0.05 milligrams per day might have some effect. Unfortunately though, there have been no further clinical studies that looked at that dose. Anyways, because of the results of the study which looked at the effects of different doses of finasteride on DHT levels, there was another study which was conducted that looked at the effects of doses of finasteride ranging from as low as 0.01 milligrams per day up to 5 milligrams daily on human subjects who have androgenic alopecia, with the endpoint being to find out which doses had the most positive outcomes on hair growth. This study was published in 1999, and I'll link it and all sources I'm going to use below as usual. The study was a double-blind placebo-controlled study of men with Norwood 3 or 4 androgenic alopecia levels, and the subjects were given either 5 milligrams, 1 milligrams, 0.2 milligrams, 0.01 milligrams of finasteride, or just placebo, and there were at least 110 subjects in each study group. The subjects were followed from 6 to 12 months and follow-ups were done looking at hair counts with phototrichograms as well as patient self-assessments, investigator assessment, and global photographic assessments. They also looked at serum DHT and testosterone levels. So if you look at the overall results, you'll see that finasteride is not very dose dependent. Here's a graph of hair counts on 5 milligrams a day of finasteride versus placebo, and here is another graph showing the results with the other doses. The only dose that didn't increase hair counts was the 0.01 milligram dose, which was no different from placebo. So clearly, you shouldn't use a ridiculously low dose of an asteroid, like 0.01 milligrams per day. You know, I can understand dose titration, but let's get serious, guys. You need at least more than a homeopathic dose of an asteroid in order for it to work. So anyways, looking at the actual changes in hair counts, the first effective dose was 0.2 milligrams, which seems like a low dose, but this is 
still 20 times higher than the tiny 0.01 milligram dose that they tested. So now we're getting into territory where we actually see some positive outcomes. So in the case of 0.2 milligram patients, they experienced significantly increased hair counts after 12 months. And using a phototrichogram, the researchers found that the subjects averaged an increase of 65 new hairs per square inch on the scalp. So we know that 0.2 milligrams works, but what about larger doses? Do those work better? Well, let's go up to the FDA approved dose of one milligrams per day and see. In this case, one milligram also worked and the hair count increase amongst the subjects was 85 hairs per square inch after 12 months. So even though finasteride does have some diminishing returns the higher you go up in dose, it is clear that one milligram of finasteride is still slightly better than 0.2 milligrams of finasteride, although the dose response is curvilinear, which is why we don't see results that are five times better, even though the dose is five times higher. So in that regard, does finasteride peak when it comes to hair loss benefits at one milligram, or is there any additional benefit for hair loss in using the full five milligrams of finasteride that is found in a Proscar tablet? Well, as it turns out, it looks like the hair growth was slightly better on five milligrams per day, but the difference is not statistically significant. In fact, there is only an eight hair count difference between one milligram versus five milligrams, which is quite a contrast to the 20 hair count difference with the one milligram versus 0.2 milligrams. Like I said though, this difference between five milligrams and one milligram wasn't statistically significant, meaning they were about equally as effective. These same results were also seen when the researchers looked at patient self-assessments, investigator assessments, as well as in the global photographic assessments. Five milligrams and one milligram were about equally as effective, and 0.2 milligrams was slightly less effective, while 0.01 milligram was ineffective in all the assessments that were done. So the metrics for measuring results here were all very consistent, so the data we see here is all very reliable. So obviously, we know that finasteride works by suppressing DHT. So it makes me curious as to what the difference in DHT suppression was between the varying doses of finasteride that were used in the study. Well, Looking at the 0.01 milligram dose first, even though it didn't produce any outcomes in terms of hair growth, it still, interestingly enough, suppressed some DHT, 11% in fact, despite the fact that it was totally ineffective in causing hair growth. So this does show that you need to have more than just a small amount of DHT suppression for a drug to be effective, which may explain why natural treatments that theoretically lower DHT, like soft palmetto, uh, stinging nettle root, or reishi mushrooms, don't work even though the mechanism behind them is similar to finasteride. The problem is they just don't lower DHT enough, so taking them may be the equivalent of using 0.01 milligrams of finasteride, which also has valid mechanistic data, but just doesn't produce any benefit. This is a good example as to why outcome data is always better than mechanistic data in terms of the hierarchy of scientific evidence. A treatment could have a good theory and still not produce any results, which is why you should always rely on outcome outcome data as opposed to just mechanistic data. So let's go ahead and move on to the smallest dose we do know works, and that is 0.2 milligrams of finasteride. In terms of DHT suppression, 0.2 milligrams of finasteride suppress 61% of serum DHT. So this is substantially more DHT suppression than 0.01 milligrams, and we know it is enough suppression for it to stop and reverse hair loss because we saw those outcomes in the patients who were on this specific dose of finasteride. So how about one milligram of finasteride? Well, we know one milligram works slightly better than 0.2 milligrams, so logic would dictate that that means it suppresses more DHT, right? Well, it does, but surprisingly, it isn't as much more suppression as you may think. One milligram of finasteride suppressed 68%, which is just a 7% difference from 0.2 milligrams of finasteride, but still a big enough difference to give a statistically significant advantage over 0.2 milligrams of finasteride in terms of producing favorable outcomes with fighting hair loss. So that's great, but what about 5 milligrams of finasteride? Well, surprisingly, in terms of DHT suppression, the results were identical to the 1 milligram dose, which was still just 68% DHT suppression. So this does seem to confirm that finasteride hits a plateau at around 1 milligram per day, at least in terms of serum DHT. This study did not perform any scalp biopsies, but we also know that since the subjects on 5 milligrams per day did not have a statistically significant improvement in terms of hair regrowth, 
growth over one milligrams per day, that this means that the therapeutic effect for treating hair loss with finasteride does seem to plateau at one milligram daily. So the serum DHT suppression we see here is probably very similar, if not identical to the scalp DHT suppression, which is what was seen in the other study on scalp suppression we just went over. So the bottom line is that there is no benefit to going above one milligram of finasteride if your goal is to fight hair loss. And this also proves that you can go below one milligram and only experience a slight decrease in benefits. Though if you go below 0.2 milligrams of finasteride, then you're really starting to enter into uncharted territory. It would have been interesting to see if some middle ground between 0.01 milligram and 0.2 milligrams of finasteride were tested. Like say for instance, we tested 0.1 milligram, but for now, the existing data seems to suggest that 0.2 milligrams is the minimum effective dose for finasteride in treating hair loss. Though the scalp biopsy study I mentioned earlier suggests that lower doses above 0.01 milligram per day might still suppress significant amounts of scalp DHT. The problem though is we don't have any clinical data on hair counts at such low doses. Another point of interest is that in all the doses above 0.2 milligrams, there was a similar increase in testosterone, roughly 18 to 19 percent increases in fact. This is due to the fact that the inhibition of the 5-AR enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT results in more testosterone since less of it will be converted into the trash hormone DHT. This is probably not a factor of concern either way because an 18 to 19 percent increase in testosterone is not high enough for any ergogenic benefits. So it would not be anything like the testosterone jump you'd get from taking steroids for instance which can easily quadruple your baseline androgen levels. Although I think one thing I think is worth speculating on at least is the potential for aromatization. The researchers didn't look at serum estradiol levels but we know from other studies that an increase in testosterone levels can cause an increase in estrogen levels due to the aromatase enzyme, which converts testosterone into estrogen. Now, I want to be clear here. Nobody knows exactly why finasteride causes side effects, but one possibility that I think is at least credible is that in some individuals, this slight increase in estrogen due to aromatization could be just high enough to cause some sexual side effects. However, this may not even be true because there are reports of people dropping their dose from 1 milligram to 0.2 milligrams of finasteride, and then the side effects sub subsequently go away. However, the research here shows that the increase in testosterone from 0.2 milligrams to 1 milligrams is the same. So you'd assume the amount of aromatization would be the same as well. So therefore, you'd expect the incidence of sexual side effects to be the same as well. So it could be very well possible that there is some underlying mechanism behind finasteride side effects that we just don't know about, which is another reason why we shouldn't rely too much on mechanistic data. Because oftentimes, we don't even know half of what is going on physiologically when we administer a treatment. Hell, there are a lot of FDA-approved drugs in the market where we don't even know for sure how they work. The important thing, though, is that the drug is just safe and effective. We don't necessarily need to know everything that is going on with the drug, though. Anyways, my next video is going to be a balls-deep dive into the real incidence of finasteride side effects based on the scientific data, not the Propecia Help Forms data. So we'll talk about that in more detail in the next video soon. So personally, though, what I do when I take finasteride is I'll take a 5 milligram generic Proscar tablet and I'll use a pill cutter or a razor blade to quarter it into 1.25 milligram pieces. I do this because it is cheaper and since we know finasteride peaks at 1 milligrams and therefore I am getting roughly a 1 milligram dose with maybe just a touch extra, who knows. But it is a dose of finasteride that has worked well for me and I have had no side effects. So. Even though finasteride has a short half-life, only several hours long in fact, the DHT suppressing properties will persist up to four days. Now, that doesn't mean that the drug will be 100% effective on the fourth day as it is on the first day, but it should be potent enough that you can at least use it every other day and possibly even every third day. There are people reporting success taking doses as low as 0.25 milligrams every other day. So if you have some apprehension about using finasteride, this kind of dose might be a good place to start. And since studies suggest that even this low of a dose has a good effect on suppressing scalp DHT, you may be able to just stay on this dose indefinitely. 
I know there are some doctors who have prescribed finasteride just twice weekly, and even that has been effective for some people, although I wouldn't go so far as to suggest that this kind of dosing is equally as effective to daily or every other day use. The point, though, is that clinical research on finasteride should be seen as a general guideline for the patient population, but ultimately it is up to a doctor to decide an appropriate dose titration that maximizes the efficacy of a drug while minimizing the risk of side effects. So if you are contemplating treatment with finasteride, or if you're already on treatment and thinking about a dose titration due to side effects, for the love of God, people, do not go online to ask people who are not doctors about what the best dosage is. Nobody you speak to online is qualified to diagnose you, and nobody can predict how well you're going to respond to a treatment because you are you and you are unique. What works well for others may not work well for you, and that is why these drugs are prescribed by medical professionals and not just sold over the counter. They're prescription drugs because it is up to your doctor to determine what is best for you. So even though doses and different frequencies will work better for some people, there are a few things we can say for certain when it comes to dosing. For one, we can say for certain based on the scientific data that you don't need more than one milligram of finasteride per day. Secondly, we can say with at least a fair degree of certainty that the minimum dose of finasteride for effectiveness is 0.2 milligrams per day or maybe a little bit lower, who knows, but certainly not as low as 0.01 milligrams per day as even though that may suppress some DHT, it doesn't suppress enough to influence hair loss outcomes effectively. Thirdly, we know that even though the finasteride dosing studies were based on daily use, that the prolonged effect of finasteride suppressing DHT means that it can probably be used on an every other day basis. And there's enough corroboration from dermatologists who actually use it this way to confirm that this likely works. Finally, this study is not large enough or detailed enough to address the incidence or mechanism of finasteride side effects. Now, the study did look at side effects and the researchers concluded, quote, comparison of safety data from these studies demonstrated that treatment with finasteride at any of the doses tested resulted in safety profiles that were similar to each other and not significantly different from placebo, unquote. So you may read this and think, oh, well, this means 0.2 milligrams of finasteride has the same side effect profile as one milligrams of finasteride, so there's no point adjusting the dosage. However, keep in mind finasteride already has a very low incidence of side effects, so even in a sample size of several hundred people, you are only going to get a small handful of people who report any side effects at all. So in terms of determining efficacy, a study with a few hundred people is fine since we know most people respond to the drug, but since side effects are rare, you need sample sizes of several thousand people to determine the incidence of side effects, and fortunately we do have that data, but for the time being, we can conclude that the incidence of finasteride side effects are low in people who use any dosage, but we can't say for certain if 0.2 milligrams of finasteride has a lower side effect profile than 1 milligram. However, as I'll demonstrate in my next video, there is a higher side effect profile in 5 milligrams of finasteride compared to 1 milligram, which would suggest that the side effects of finasteride are indeed dose dependent. So people who do get side effects from 1 milligrams of finasteride should still consider a lower dose to mitigate the risk of side effects, especially since the difference in efficacy between 0.2 milligrams and 1 milligrams of finasteride isn't all that significant. So, the bottom line is that finasteride allows a lot of leverage in terms of titration when it comes to efficacy. So what the optimal dosage is for you is something you will be able to determine with your doctor. However, just because you aren't using the standard one milligram per day dose does not mean the drug will not be effective. On the contrary, the evidence suggests it absolutely will be. So that is yet another great thing about finasteride. It's not very dose dependent and low doses can work just as well as higher doses or at least close to. But for the the last time though, please stop asking people on Reddit and hair loss forums what dose you should use for finasteride. There is no way they can give you an answer that is better than what a doctor who has diagnosed you can provide. In fact, you probably shouldn't be posting on Reddit and hair loss forums or even viewing them under any circumstances to begin with or else you'll just end up throwing your finasteride in the trash and then trying to save your hair by rubbing broccoli sprouts, onion juice, and zinc tablets on your scalp or some other such nonsense. But anyways, with that, I'll see you soon, Chooms, because, you know, we got a lot more work to do. So until then, good luck on the path, my fellow hair loss witchers, and take care. See ya.